Microsoft. <laughs> I'm Marshall Marty, and welcome back to another video of Windows 10 via Linux Mint. Today we're gonna go over 10 reasons to upgrade. Which one's better? Yeah. So reason number one is I think this one's probably the biggest issue that has pushed a lot of people away from Windows 10, and that's the forced updates. The worst thing about forced updates is it takes control of your computer. Your computer should serve you. You should not serve your computer. If you can't have your business notes ready for that business meeting, then it's time time to move to greener pastures. One time, my dad was actually in the middle of banking. He was signed into his bank account, and this, this little monkey fart just flies up to the screen and goes, your, your computer's going to update in 10 seconds. And now my dad's just like, like, is this normal? Are you supposed to be having this in the middle of your banking? Is he hacked? So yeah, that was scary. I remember sometimes I would just try and shut down my computer and go to bed, and then it'd be forced updating to like, what? In my case, sometimes it would be up till midnight. Some of that might not be Windows' fault because I do have pretty slow internet. I live in the country, so. You compare that with Linux, and uh, it's not much of a comparison, I think. I'm gonna show you something real quick here. So, on Microsoft's Windows 10, you're forced to update, right? I'm gonna show you something here. Let's see what it says. 220 updates available, and the number keeps going up. Do I want to install these updates? No. Am I going to install these updates? No. These updates can just sit there and sit there. I mean, this is Linux we're talking about. The safest OS that there is, so. But this is just part of the freedom and choice that you have with Linux. You decide when you up want your updates. If you're wondering why I don't actually update is I have updated before. My model that I've come to adopt from what my dad and my brother say is, if you have a system that works, don't fix it. I think that's a safe bet with Linux anyway, because this brings us to point number two do is security linux is the most secure operating system that there is and i can say that with a surety that that is a fact so on windows 10 we have had 20 plus viruses now you're probably thinking man marty you're just not very safe on the internet but hold on one of these viruses actually came from the windows store auto installer thing piece of garbage there's this thing called the app installer it basically installs bloatware onto your new windows 10 machine it installs something called bite fence Ooh. it was supposed to be like a free antivirus thing the thing was it actually had a virus packed with it and then mcafee another bloatware that they packed onto my windows 10 picked up the virus that windows 10 installed <laughs> how many viruses have i had on linux zero zero with a capital z my entire family which all now use linux have had zero viruses in over a year now if you're wondering what that mm, sound is, my sister's making a cake because it's her birthday, so she's making a birthday cake. What? What is this? Piece of straw. By the way, I live on a farm, so you can expect me to have a little bit of straw on my shirt sometimes. Carrying on. So now there's a couple of reasons why there isn't a lot of viruses on Linux. The first thing is is if you were a hacker and you wanted to distribute a virus, Windows would be a way better target. That's because Windows has a larger market share than Linux. Linux takes up 3 to 6% of the entire desktop market share. So when you think about it, if you're going to distribute a virus, just go on Windows. You're going to get more people anyway. Aside from that, Windows 10 has some security flaws that always have made me scratch my head. So you can download an executable from the internet. And to run it, you just double click. This little thing will pop up. It says, do you want to run as administrator? And all you got to do is click. There's always a bunch of memes that they have like in the Linux group about how safe that is. Like there's one with the Cheeto in the lock. <laughs> and I think that's pretty accurate because when you compare that with Linux, I'm going to show you what I have to do if I want to install software. So if I want to do something like change my firewall, so I'll go into the firewall. As you see, I've got into my password. So it's a really safe system. You do anything that requires administrative access, you've got to enter your password. And I think that's a great security measure. So Linux takes the win over Windows for security. Third thing, internet. So I don't know how much of an issue this is for you, but for me, there is a noticeable difference between Windows 10 internet and Linux internet. And that is because of the telemetry on Windows 10. The telemetry was it was an infamous issue. You had essentially no way to safely disable it. Now, I live on an acreage, like 20 minutes out of town. So that means my internet access is limited. The telemetry would suck down the internet so bad that the telemetry would take more gigabytes of data than my actual browsing. Linux 
has no telemetry. Like Lennox Mint, Arc, Debian, Fedora, OpenSUSE, they all don't do any telemetry. Moving on, number four, bloatware. Ah, the Candy Crush Soda Sega Adventure. So bloatware is defined as unwanted software that comes default installed. Windows 10 is infamous for doing this. Why? Because, well, Candy Crush Soda Sega, one of the more notable ones, pays Microsoft hate. Here's some money. If you force install this on users, you can have the money. You can pair that on Linux, and I can guarantee you, on a fresh install of Linux Mint, all you will have installed. You will have nothing more than this for your internet. You will have only the essentials. You got your calculator. It starts you off with GIMP because, I mean, who doesn't use GIMP? And it gives you the bare bone essentials. All right, and number five, we have software. So now we're actually talking about the available software that is on Linux and on Windows. On Linux, you got really good software, and on Windows, you also got really good software. Linux and Windows are kind of at a tie for software right now. The only difference with Linux software is most of it is free. If you want to do video editing, you got Kaden Live, DaVinci Resolve. Now, DaVinci Resolve, this is what the pros use. I use Kaden Live because Kaden Live is more appropriate to what I'm doing. And, but if you're into doing film stuff, DaVinci Resolve is a great option and it's on Linux. So, you got Blender, that's for doing 3D animations and 3D models. If you want to do animation, there's OpenTunes, Krita, Tubi. And one of my personal favorites is this little bit of software. So, it's called Liber. Liber Sprite and it's basically this little program that you can do like pixel art and then you can animate that pixel art so it's really cool easy to use I use it all the time because I like to make more pixel art games you got sublime text here this is what I'm using to actually keep track of my notes which comes free free super easy to install if you want to do recording you got a few different options you got OBS studio here you also got your good old simple screen recorder works just as good as OBS but with a few less options and the nice part is it's guaranteed to be safe if you get your software from the software manager most Linux distros hand out software through something called the software manager and here we, we can see we got WhatsApp Spotify, Steam, Banshee, and these are the big name guys here. If software makes it into the software manager, it has been tested and verified to be safe and trustable. Now, you can also go online and then you can install like packages onto your computer without using the software manager. You can definitely do that, but those aren't going to be guaranteed to be safe. Number six gaming. Gaming has kind of always been a big one that, that Windows users say. They say, yeah, I would switch to Linux, but I got my games and I want to play them on the Windows. The first thing is a software called Play on Linux. With that particular software, I have gotten this game, this game, this game, this game. I've gotten these plus more to work. I mean, and this one, 18 Wheels of Steel Hard Truck is a classic. But some of these games do not work on Windows 10, and yet they work on Linux. So that's amazing. And that's just with Play on Linux. But there's more. Fairly recently, Valve, the guys who make Steam, have created something called Proton. Proton just converts Windows code, Windows games, into a Linux game. And so far, according to ProtonDB, there are 5,200 Windows games that work on Linux. We've got games such as Dota 2, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, GTA 5, Warframe, Rust. But if you're into new games, Proton's got you covered. Aside from that, a couple years ago, Vulkan came out, which which Vulkan is like the really low underlying engine that runs the games. Before that on Linux, we just had OpenGL, which OpenGL is pretty outdated. Now that we've got Vulkan to replace it, which is incredibly faster, like incredibly fast, even faster than DirectX, which is on Windows, games are running faster than ever and better than ever on Linux. So seven, we got stability. Hands down, Linux is a far more stable system. We've been up and running for an entire year without a single down day on my computer, my dad's computer, my mom's computer. The thing is, Linux just doesn't break. We use Linux Mint and it's a, it's a very stable, safe system. Now, uh, Windows on the other hand, I think this is a really good indicator of how unstable Windows 10 really is. So this hard drive, I wore it out from reinstalling Windows 10. Windows 10 was such an unstable system that kept breaking and it broke so many times that I reinstalled Windows 10 to the point of wearing this hard drive out completely. Like completely and utterly wearing this little guy out. So now this is garbage, trash, or a $100 
paperweight. Windows 10 really is unstable. There's a reason why most hospitals and businesses are still using Windows 7 and Windows XP. So number eight is the user interface. So this is less important to me as the other components of a OS. This is more just sugar on the cake. But I think Linux does an incredibly good job of creating a user interface. It's simple, it's effective, the best thing about the user interface is you can change it to whatever you like. The taskbar is getting old, just switch it around. It's so customizable, you can actually make your own themes, which is incredibly cool. I tend to stick with the Mint Y themes. I think those look pretty good. And on Windows 10, Windows 10 is even less customizable than Windows 7. On Windows 7, you could change the color of the taskbar, stuff like that. There's a few tweaks you could do to make it look nicer. There's like three themes you had to work with. And on Windows 10, you got one. So, number nine, the installation process. The installation on process on Windows 10 is a nightmare. Windows 10 takes a ridiculously long amount of time to install. In fact, sometimes I would have it to 12 hours and up. So not only is the installation long, but the reinstallation, if you broke something on your computer or something broke on its own, it can take up to 12 hours. Now it takes this long because, because there's a bunch of dump files and telemetry log files that get uploaded when you re-update the system. So when you reinstall the system, a whole bunch of data goes up to Microsoft's cloud. And in my case, I have a really bad internet connection, so it takes a long, long time to do that. Now with Linux, I just take this thumb drive, plug it into my computer, and in a half an hour, Linux Mint will be reinstalled, ready to go. And the final point at 10 is freedom. Linux is freedom. Windows 10, it's kind of like communism. Linux is completely free. In fact, you can create your own Linux. You can download the source code, compile it yourself, adjust everything to the way you like it. I think that the workstation should allow the user to do what really whatever they want on that workstation. The user should be allowed to test or mess around with stuff, break their own system, keep the system working. It's really all up to the user on Linux. On Windows 10, you're told when to update. There is no effective way to disable Cortana. I tried and then the start menu does not work if you don't have Cortana. You just have no control over Windows 10. After everything is said and done, I honestly recommend, if you haven't made the switch already, I recommend Linux Mint. It's so easy to get up and running, you just take your USB, you put Linux on the USB, you put that on your computer, you're up and running Linux. If you have any questions or comments, just let me know in the comments section. If you enjoyed, code like, and I will see you next video. Marsh and Marty out.